Alright, this is your boy Paul Blake in the building. Oh, wait a minute. Turn off the sound effect. Okay. So, um, let's talk about... Let's see. I was testing Magi Scepters. That deck is really, really good. Like, holy shit. The fact that this deck can just... Can just pendulum summon and get rewarded with spells and trap cards to protect them is really... It's really decent. It's something that I felt that your Sinjus should have should have been, but instead Konami, you know, poorly designed them. Cause like, okay, yes, you can know someone, know someone, know someone, know someone, but what about if they if, if the lower portals are pendulum or something? Those should be your rewards. Oh yeah, if you pendulum this one, you get to add this one, do this, do that, do that, whatever. But in reality, they didn't do that. And yes, in this game one, he. He he abused my chicken race and he went for his chicken race and he went right through his deck so easily. Ooh man, so yeah, that was decent for the jump. So for me, like the reason why I flipped the, the um the Valkyrie to put some pressure on him and I, that was my mistake. I shouldn't have popped the post ball because I didn't know what the hell he was playing and I should have just went for the punish on the ritual beast and because I didn't do that. You see, um, you see me getting punched for a while. Um, so getting back to that, Magic Scepters, they're just, oh my gosh, the the normal spell card, the one that says that you can tribute one wind spellcaster to shuffle a monster back to the deck. <laughs> Whoa, I think I think we have like the best counter to like any Cleaves. Even though, like, okay, in battle wise, they'll naturally lose to Cleaves, but in spells and trap card wise, I don't think so. I seriously don't think so. All you, like, okay, Master of the Cleaves, they would need, like, some heavy back row, maybe some smokes and trap cards to deal with the floodgates. After that, they just, they just go in. They just go in. I mean, like, when you look at, like, like for, for example, if you looked at Linium's video about how he did the Magic Scepters with the Pendulum Claw, I, I, I follow the same route. Don't get me wrong. I didn't copy, I didn't copy the whole deck list, but I did, I did, you know, I went around the route. And wow, when I tell you, when I tell you that um that pendulum car gets in there, it gets in there. And we, all right, game two, I sided out the swing gaze. I'm thinking about just putting that car on the side that come like primarily, and I'll put in like the trans modifiers and stuff in there because I felt like when I was playing um DDDs. When I was playing, the, like when I was like playing it from game one, I felt you know like, it was a, it was a dead draw, and I felt like if I had like something that was like better or something that's gonna like bring it back in the game, you know, it would have been it would have been a lot more easier. But instead, you know, salvation gave me a you know a, a terrible top pick, which happens. So, <clears throat> so right here, I go for the setup. He's gonna activate fairy wind. Um, I'm gonna activate the. I'm gonna activate this guy. He says that when you discard when you discard him, you could you could return a DD card or a counter card that you control back to the hand. So I didn't save the trap card because the trap card really doesn't matter, especially if I'm under reckless. So I really wanted my common card to stay on the as much as possible. But unfortunately, he drew into another fairy win, like a boss. So you see me. You see how I how I react towards it on like in the action gameplay. So let's see, magic scepters. I feel I think my favorite card for that deck would be Unicorn because Unicorn could just return any monster back to the hand, which is like absolutely great. I mean, shit. So you know how good that would be if that's okay. It's good against Ritual Beast. It's good against um, Necros to a point, but then at the same time, you don't really want to. You don't really want to put their monsters. Back in their hand, and this is where I, how I'll, I'll play them. I'll play them. Get rid of the rest of his background. He scooped immediately. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like that card counters cleaves, counters. It counters a lot of combo based decks. It com it counters Shadal's really bad. <laughs> oh, I have a pesky window to fill. Okay, I'm just gonna pencil all these guys and like bounce your window back so you don't get your your, your Shadal card. And, and, and even if you do even if you do El Shadal Fusion in your window, I will activate my trap card, which is which is the one with the raccoon on it. 
YouTube one wind spellcaster type monster and to banish your opponent's monster. Like that card is like this thing's hilarious. It's hilarious. And yes, I made a mistake again. I know I bakeried the elder way too early. Which is kind of annoying, but you know. I, I'm gonna capitalize on this. Um oh yeah, also to get back to what I was side. I saw it in an appearance on the walls and comment of the mistaken seal. This is where you can actually utilize it in this matchup because of the fact that for one for one, this deck plays too many freaking traps. And two two, you you have control of it. So it's like you know how you know how you play those decks where where they just push them so much and they just flip up Andy, you're like, oh what the hell? Yes, I can make an established board established board utilize this card and it's punish my opponent for doing anything. But unfortunately, you'll see what's going to happen, because he drew the best, the best. I'm going to activate my, my whole game. He's going to activate the third one. I'm going to, of course, I'm forced to flip up my mistaken seal, and he activates another one. I'm like, really? So, and because I had Leonidas on the field anyway, I didn't really, I wasn't really, like, scared at all. So, I was straight. But, um... As you see right here, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the Ritual Beast player into a late game, which is why like why is well, this is where I consider late game. When you're when you're getting down to your like into like the twenties of the cards. Like we're getting like we're getting right into late game. Like really close. Now he goes for the Kenhawk, the eh, Apelio. Now you gotta see where where I punish him a lot. You know, I put I flipped with the trap card to see to see if I could um if I could put some pressure on him and yes I did because when you flip with, when you flip with the Valkyrie, you have the choice of activating the card, like the actual effect, or just flipping it up just to flip it up. And because I just flipped it up, he just went, nah, I that I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna just you know tag out, whatever. Do his little thing. Now wait, this was an interesting choice. He searched for the quick play spell card. I know how I felt about that. I don't know how I feel about that. He plays the quote play spell card. The quote play is really good. Um Chidume in in the Oblivion Clan, he plays it in his Ritual Beast, which is really good. Good dodge card. And of course, I had a blind I had a blind Valkyrie that and I hit the right card. So because I hit the right card, now I have control of the duel. And then he suddenly tags out. I would have just let the Apelio die. And this is where I where I kinda messed up. You can see where I messed up at. You see where you did bring out another monster. Okay, yeah, this is where I messed up at. Now, I randomly attacked the counterhawk, and I was like, why didn't I just attack the tamers away? Because at least then you wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, yes, my only greatest fear would be Castell or or Ring Core play, but because of that, he was able to get back to the duel. But because I dropped another Max C, because I drew a Max C into Max C, like really, like really salvation, the, the, the trolliness is real, you know? So, and of course, he didn't want to take the Max C challenge, and he was he was probably betting on on me to, um, <clears throat> to, to blind, not blind, but to hope I didn't draw the Covenant or DD card for the Trap card. But because I drew, I drew the Trap card, I was able to open him up, and he goes for. <sighs> he go he goes for his boss boss there. But thank goodness the continuous they, they, ah, thank goodness that he can't really activate the actual effect. Because in order to activate his actual effect you have to bring him out successfully. So thank goodness thank you Vince Konami for making this part really fair. Even though the deck itself is entirely not fair, but you know. But yeah, I drew into the Imperial Wall. And right here, I just started to take control of the duel, and he just scooped immediately. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the duel. Like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I will be dropping a video of Magic Scepter's next.